subject that we have is the north-south Route 12 arterial project. Uh, we have some questionnaires. If you'd like to take them, you can return them to Jeanette and Jeanette on the corner of Noyes and Lincoln. Um, it has been very quiet after all the rockets that went on some months ago. Well, they do that for a reason because they're planning and they're just letting the, the waters kind of calm and uh, so then they can strike. So um, we are on top of it and we are trying, we're fighting to keep Sunset Ave open and to continue to work on phase two to create a boulevard type style instead of a freeway coming, dividing, slicing through the um, heart of West Utah and ghetto centrifying us pretty much. Um, and the last thing is our community organization, Arts West Alliance, it's having an event called Utica Jam for Change. We have little flyers um, and going around before we leave. We just took the past month if anybody didn't get any. And uh, that's a, um, an event to redevelop the park, the skate park in Lincoln Playground, into to a state-of-the-art uh, skate plaza, which would draw attention and help the local area economy as well. Um, so that's one of the things that our West Alliance is doing, is redeveloping our West Utica Park and building upon the assets that we already have instead of wasting money and dumping it into new. And thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Harmony. And uh, the next thing we have up is going to be uh, Trent, who is one of our local young uh, people that Cassandra wishes that we have more of. And she's going to talk about uh, education. In it's everything. It's everything. All right, give her a round of applause. I can be louder, okay? Yeah, yeah, do that. <laughs> yeah, right, give it to him. Okay, cliches. We all get our daily dose of them. The other day, I asked one of my brightest and most promising teachers the question, what does the future look like? That's got a great idea. He gave me the typical and generic response, one that I was obviously not looking for. Some chit-chat about how things will be worse and we're on a downward spiral. I kind of just wanted to punch him in the face. <laughs> I mean, be bold and honest, you know? But instead, I just laughed. I found it really amusing, and you know, as I realized that the answer really had nothing to do with economic, political, or social conditions, I came to an epiphany that the future looks like me. It looks like my few peers in the audience right now. It looks like 3,000 kids in Proctor High School and thousands of others around the country, in middle, ele elementary, and high schools alike. That's right, the future looks like the students of today. And to be quite frank, sometimes I believe that the generation preceding ours forgets that. I'm just going to wait until they pass, folks. With the economic crises and the current issues credited to the generation before my peers and I, the blame and issues tend to be hidden from students and young people like myself. The logic makes sense, but then it doesn't. Let me clarify on that. The typical mindset is that if it's not our business, or, you know, if the blame isn't on us, we don't really need to know about it. However, that's where it starts to not make sense. Students and youth are forgotten in the commotion and mishap when in all actuality, we should be one of the targeted demographics when dealing with dire situations so we can learn from them. It needs to be ensured that we have the necessary information and experience to see it through that this does not happen in the future, when we will be the ones bound to make mistakes and will have to accept accountability for our actions. The common misconception is that the younger generation does not care. This is an utter myth. We are live, blinking, listening, watching, and processing all of the information that we encounter in the world around us. With times like these, we care more than ever. The Wall Street bailouts intercepted aid that could be used to salvage and maintain the already less than decent quality of our education. Energy and oil subsidies hinder our need for a more greener and beautiful world for our future livelihoods. Trade agreements and unfair practices are exporting our meager future job prospects overseas or even into oblivion. Unconstitutional policies and political disarray has transformed our beautiful country of America into a place so unfamiliar. A world that caters to the rich and privileged has left us at a disadvantage. Corruption at all levels of government
government and law enforcement has almost strained us of all of our hope and faith in anything worth believing in. All of these reasons, they are some of the reasons why we act the way. Chances are, if I drew out a Venn diagram of why the generation preceding mine occupies and why mine does, a lot of bullets would be in the middle, where the circles overlap. This is one thing that really sticks out to me. That generational gap, it doesn't exist. As time goes on, predicaments and circumstances may change, but they still coincide with the same general outline. Schisms are never good things, whether they are between political parties, races, genders, or even generations. Yeah. It's all about coexisting and mutualism. A few months ago, the Utica City School District's budget was proposed and made available to read. I took a glimpse and thought out loud, is this real life? <laughs> Over 100 teachers were being let go and 22 sports teams cut. That week at school, I couldn't get rid of the cloud over my head as I attended the classes of brilliant, young, and promising teachers that I knew would be out of a job next year. An idea quickly transpired into reality as members of Occupy Utica helped in organizing a student rally in support in support of the teachers in sports uh, that was in front of the administration buildings. In a time of much needed civil action and activism, students received the help that they needed to carry out a much needed and effective demonstration. All thanks to people working together and being able to do so by forgetting about factors that set them apart and focusing on bond, bonds that brought us together. Empathy and understanding will ultimately make the axles of this wheel of the world spin more smoothly. We can all struggle alone as individuals and factions, or we can struggle together as many and a whole. Division and partisanship drive barriers that are designed to split us up and weaken us. Division and partisanship are more dangerous than any rubber bullets, smoke bombs, tear gas, zip ties, batons, and riot shields can ever be. We are all the 99% and we must stand in solidarity as sisters and brothers in order to achieve any ounce of success. As the saying goes, together we are unstoppable, another world is possible. Yeah.